righty then, here we are. It's Lit Book Reviews back for another episode. This is the podcast where we discuss all things books. <clears throat> Whoa, did I just hit puberty? Did you hear that? All things books. <laughs> uh, and this is one of our uh, weekly update recap videos that we've been doing lately. We missed last week uh, due to busyness because we're both so important. And uh, we're here to make mm. up for that. So, uh, yeah, man, it's been, um, I guess, a couple weeks since our last update. How's your life been since then? How's it hanging, it bro? It's been great. <laughs> it is still there. And I'm forever grateful for that. Um, <laughs> it's kind of crazy, bro. Today's the 30th. Dude, literally tomorrow is December. Yeah, that is wild. Like, I just feel like this year is just really... You slid away. <laughs> slid on. It's a slow fade, down man. The road. That year just be going by. <laughs> um, but no, I mean, I've I've had a decent week. Tomorrow's like my first. Uh, like I'll actually have my own my own shifts at work. Oh, nice. So that's when I start the next schedule. But yeah, it's weird this December. So it's getting cold up here. Is it cold down down Yanda? Yeah, it was like 33 degrees this morning. Um, it heats up usually yeah, during the day, but um, I mean, dude, I like the cold, dude. I will take 32 over 98. I'll take our, our winter over this last summer we had down here in the old peach state. Dude, I'm good. I am. You're good on that? I'm good. Yeah, I think I'll take the heat all day or Really? Day. 98 over 33? Mm-hmm. Dude, no, no chance. 100%. I'm taking 33 every day of the year. Dude, I'll even take rain. <laughs> I was talking to one of my buddies today. He still has the iPhone 11, and it's like working fine. I was like, wow, that's crazy. One in a million. Out. Yeah, it's something else. But that's cool, man. So uh, work, and uh, that's pretty much it, eh? Yeah, that's it. And um I got all my Christmas shopping done early, dude. It feels good. I don't know if I told you that or not. This is yeah. the first time I've ever done it, and it's great. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm envious of that fact because I, I haven't gotten any done. I haven't bought a single thing for Christmas, and we are. On dude, the cusp I, that's what of I normally December. do. Yeah, and I don't know why. I don't know what was different about this year where it's like, oh, I'm gonna be different. But I guess like I just knew there was a lot of deals going on. But I mean, I feel like I always know there are deals going on. I still just refuse to like take advantage, and I don't know what it was this yeah. year, but. I took no advantage, bro. I saw one Instagram reel with them removing the Black Friday sale, like, uh, like papers, like from the plastic, like, you know, little sign that shows the price of things. I showed that a person going through Target removing all of those signs to reveal that the like normal price was the same as the Black Friday, that like it would be something for six ninety nine, and then the Black Friday would just say, uh, 60% off six (laughs) 99. I was like, wow. (laughs) I don't know if that's real or not, but uh, I feel like people would definitely fall for it, so whatever. Um, yeah, we had deals with us, and then I remember when I was working in retail before, I mean, I don't ever remember us like actually changing the prices, but I've heard, especially like clothing stores, I feel like that's like a big deal. Yeah. I'll be here. I'll be here in every night. Words on the street, huh? Um, mm-hmm. Well, that's cool, man. It's so what have you been reading recently? Uh, reading, I mean, I am still in Napoleon, obviously. I'm trekking through. I'm like halfway through Napoleon. I'm, I'm, that's got to be the slowest I've read a book this entire year. I don't. I, I guess it's because we're focusing on other stuff, too. Like, we're doing a lot of this Sanderson stuff and reading other things here and there. And um, it's really, really good. Like, I've enjoyed every bit of it, truly. Um, and I'm excited for our next video on it. But I am reading it slow, probably about halfway through. Um and then I'm just reading uh, Mistborn. What chapter are you on? Uh, I think I got a 13 the other day. I think day. I'm on I 16 or 17. Sorry, get on um, that more. So I'm not too far ahead of you, but uh, yeah, I'm dude. I'm only I'm under 200 pages. I have under 200 pages in Hero of Ages, and I mean, obviously, we'll talk about that in a different video. Getting and wild. <laughs> I am. I, I won't say much, dude, but it's so good. Dude. I am so glad we read it when we did. It didn't wait longer. I'm so glad. Yeah, I'm like 13 pages or 13 chapters mm-hmm. in. Um, only got in a couple chapters today, dude. I I should have finished um, 
float over bright haven today i mean i literally have like 40 pages. it's like i feel bad i've like dude you put all this pressure on me dude to get caught back up in <laughs> mistborn and because i literally finished that book before you even started it and then I that just first took one? too long yeah. to get this one going, the Blood of a Bright Haven going. And so I started that to wait for you to do the second one. And now, here we are. I mean, I feel like I've lost all the. It's it's a tragedy for, for that book because it's such a good book. But because I like stopped it like during like the peak end of the yeah. book, like I'm going back and like I'm getting back into it. And then it's like, oh man, this is great. And it's like, man, I can't believe I just teased myself and have wait, like just left this unresolved. I mean, because it's on a complete cliffhanger, like where I left it. <laughs> Dude, prioritize and it, it's man. Good. Get it finished. But anyway, I mean, yeah, well, today I was just out of it, bro. I was not, I try. I read like a chapter. Yeah. Um, but anyway, I'm excited to talk about that. Dude, that the ML Wong. Yeah. Yeah, that's who it is. Dude, I mean, bangers of, of some standalone books, yeah. so, and they're very unique, so I'm I'm interested to talk a little more in depth about that one, just because it's, it's definitely something that's, like, completely different than, like, what we've read, especially, like, with what, like, I'm excited for you to read some stuff like that, too, just because it is so different um, from, like, what we've read as far as Sanderson yeah. and Cosmere-related stuff, um, but it just still gives you that, like, fresh perspective on, like, fantasy that's <clears throat> still, like, top tier without... I mean, it's easy to think like, oh, nothing will ever compare to Sanderson. Mm -hmm. And in some ways, that's definitely true. But, dude, I mean, there's just so many books out there that have such good, like, elements that, yeah, maybe it doesn't on a 10-point scale beat a Cosmere book. But, you know yeah. what I mean? Like, you're still going to get peak enjoyment of like, man, oh, my God. Right. You know, just the excitement of yeah. reading still exists. So, anyway, I'm excited for us to build on what we got coming up soon and then um kind of read some new stuff but i am liking mistborn right now for sure i like how it's definitely gotten completely different than i thought it was going to get so yeah, it's good man and i actually yeah, I'm, I'm not mad we'll talk about it once we finish it and do a video on it but i'll just say i'm not that it's better this way but i'm glad that we read stormlight first because it just it makes things a lot easier to comprehend and grasp and it, for me, kind of makes it more enjoyable. Oh, I've always yeah. been the type, like, I, I never go out of my way to spoil things for myself, especially with books. I'll do it for movies sometimes. But if something does get spoiled for me, it's never been something that's, like, uh, like, like ruin the experience. If anything, I felt like in some cases it makes it even better because I'm, like, it's one thing that I just know and I have locked down, so it kind of informs other things. Like, if it's something really bad, like, yeah. oh, this person's going to die or this person's not going to die, then it kind of takes away a little bit, kind of takes away some of the stakes. But in some cases, spoilers can be okay for me, in my opinion. I mean, Journey Before Destination, am I right? Oh, yeah. Oh, for sure, dude. Like, one of I my favorite series, The Faithful and the Fallen, is, I mean, you basically know the whole, like, Chosen One trope the whole time and like it's i mean you know it's a four book series and you know first chapter you meet the chosen one young lad young lad and then he actually is the chosen wow. one so it's like you know but it's not i mean it's still amazing yeah you know just is like just because you know like one thing doesn't always and that's you know, a seem that's to actually matter. a perfect segue because i have a question for you who is <laughs> who is the best chosen one in all of entertainment <laughs> Who is it? Let's be honest. <laughs> who is the best yeah. chosen who, who one? Who just really fulfills that trope and subverts it in some ways better than any character ever? <laughs> Dude, are you like referring to someone that I should know yeah. who, you, who I think you're referring yeah, to? Yeah, based on today's subject. It's something that we've no. read? <laughs> oh. I mean, Anakin Skywalker. For sure, dude. Dude, surely it's not... What's her face? Um, yeah. Who? What's her? I don't even remember her name, dude. In the oh, newest Ray. one, that's definitely not her. Um, right. Yeah, it's Anakin Skywalker. That's probably a bit of a um. That's some Anakin. hyperbole saying he's the best of all time, but it's got a special place in my heart. So, dude, I don't understand. I know, like, well, I'm sure we'll get into it, but why? Like, I guess it's more just nostalgic for us, but people act like that. I don't even know how to character, like, character. I don't even know how to correctly, like, label the arcs, but, like, the OG, uh, not the OG, sorry, like, the trilogy that comes after the, the OG, prequel. but technically is before it, the prequel prequels, trilogy. yeah. Dude, I, those movies are fire. Yeah, for sure. And 
sometimes people yeah they didn't get received great like at the time especially but as more times times gone by like the more and more popular they've gotten and the more like you know like not not like a small cult following but like a very large one it's mostly people our age do because i mean when we we grew up with those movies so like people in our you know general age i played the video games yeah me too too. like we just grew up on that so now as we're getting older and like we're more vocal like online and like with our money essentially like and the things we we want to see like it's more obvious so yeah, like Hayden coming back and, yeah, dude, and like even as a kid, that first movie is fire. Oh yeah, dude. I mean, the best one's Revenge of the Sith, all day. I'll, I'll take that I one over mean, yeah, over any of them. But, but um, but yeah. So Star Wars, we both grew up on it. What's before we really dive into it? Would Would you agree? Is that your favorite movie, Revenge of the Sith? This is gonna be ignorant, but is that the third one? It, it is. It is. Yeah, for sure. Then, dude, the battle scenes in that one are fire. That's with uh. Dude, I need to honestly sit down and rewatch. I mean, it's been a long time. It's been too long, honestly. I'm surprised I haven't. Oh, I don't let a year go by those. with watching really all those the the main six. The dude, I haven't watched them forever. Because all right, so just to walk me through it, obviously, first one is is with Liam Neeson mm-hmm. and Darth Maul, mm-hmm. and then young Obi, mm-hmm. and well, I mean, not as young as Anakin, but anyway, mm-hmm. and then movie two is what's the like plot line with that i know it starts off with that cool scene where they're in the city and anakin like jumps off the yeah. thing and like is so essentially all that, one is, that like scene it's is called is attack of the clones brain. and it's basically just gearing up for like the the big clone wars war that takes place in that mm. era um so it's the jedi getting the clones but not really under fully understanding where they came from the federation having their droid army and it all climaxes on generations um where they all fight wait is that the fight with um maybe that's like one of the movies that it's really etched in is i just there's a fight scene between yoda and count dooku yeah that's it's in just that like one hard at the end. yeah yeah it's actually one of the like more that whole big open battlefield unappreciated scenes from what i've heard from like other people say is they don't like that fight as much but i think it's dope it's the first time you see yoda like with a lightsaber and fighting uh, yeah. it's sick and you're like Whoa, uh, jumping like around like crazy. Taylor off. and I actually just watched it like a week or so ago, and she was, <laughs> it was funny. She was like tripping when Yoda started fighting because he just like screams and spins and hops around the whole time. And oh, she was yeah. like, oh my gosh, look at him. <laughs> Had she never seen it? No, dude, she's never seen Star Wars. So we've been, we just recently oh, started. She hasn't God. seen Lord of the Rings either, bro. There's so many movies she hasn't seen that you'd be baffled by. Dude, Lord of the Rings, man, is just. Those, that's one of those ones that holds up, dude. And again, it's because there's no oh, yeah. CGI in it. I do wonder, like, when you, I since I haven't seen that Yoda scene, like in my mind as a kid, dude, it looks so real. It looks so good. Does it still, still man. hold up? Decent yeah, dude, it looks so good. Like, okay. especially when you consider the time it was made. But like, it looks great, man. There are definitely some questionable moments in all Star Wars movies um, when it comes to CGI. But yeah, you know. But yeah, so yeah. Then after that one is Revenge. So then of the, the last Sith. one. Um, yeah, and, and obviously it's out of the high ground, OG. Anakin. Yeah, yeah, of and course. And then it's to do it. Yeah, <laughs> do it. I mean, dude, yeah, yeah there's yeah. just that. And, yeah. And, yeah. No, that definitely is the best one for sure, like when you yeah. really think about it. Yeah, for sure. So in light of that, uh, we're going to use this little weekly recap. We like to have a, a smaller subject for typically, hopefully, a shorter little episode during our weekly where we talk about something that's not a specific book. We kind of just do a general topic or just something we're interested in and – because I've always loved Star Wars since I was a kid, grew up on the movies, when I got really into reading, I obviously, uh, initially, really when I first started reading, like, consistently, like, every single day, like, you know, 50 plus books a year, about three years ago when that started, Star Wars books were pretty heavy on my, uh, my, uh, reading list, books that I ended up reading, so, um, I've obviously, you know, broadened my horizons a lot, again, as you may know, if you follow this channel, I'm more into history typically, but even in the fiction stuff, broaden my horizons. But there's still uh, there are still some books that are that are good and worth mentioning. Um, before we get into the specific books, I'm gonna you know mention some of my favorite Star Wars books. A couple things to say. First, there are a lot that I have not read, like a lot of really well known. Seems like there's a ton. There's so many Star Wars books, and there's some really well known, especially like Legends ones that are older from like like maybe the 90s or maybe even earlier in like early 2000s 
there's all these different legends trilogies and series and standalones that I just have not read, but I've heard a ton about. Um, I've probably read more of the new age stuff, I guess not new, new, not like the high Republic that's coming out now, but newer than a lot of the legend stuff. So that, that a lot of star Wars book fans, you know, consider some of the best. So that being said, there may not be some on this list. If you're a star Wars book fan, there may be several, for, for instance, the original Thrawn trilogy, I have not read heir to the empire and all that. I've heard a ton about it, but I have read the new one. So that's just kind of an example um, in addition is to that, all of this, where is this timeline at? Oh, they're all over the place, man. Like, I mean, there's books that are, you know, happening during or in between the movies. Uh, there are books that are like thousands of years before. Um, I'm not sure how many there are like deep into the future. I think most of the stuff they do is in the past, like Old Republic or like mm-hmm. preceding a lot of the movies. But there's there's a couple different eras um, in the books that I'm going to mention. So we'll be able to kind of get into that. But just kind of yeah. generally before we get into the specific books, some people may know this. Some, I mean, a lot of people are probably more educated on what I'm talking about, but there has always seemed to be like, especially in the fiction, like fantasy sci-fi community, kind of like a, an understanding that star Wars books maybe aren't that great. And I don't know how accurate that is. It just seems to be a lot of what I see, like either on Reddit or on YouTube or from other people that read, even people that I've talked to in person. Um, but So I don't know what that is because I don't think they're all just like poorly written or anything. I think part of it might be that you have to have like some level of love for Star Wars to really enjoy them. So it's hard for me to know because I'm obviously biased going into it. I mean, if you pop out a lightsaber, dude, I'm sold. So it doesn't take much. Um, So that being said, like, you know, and we'll see the ratings like, you know, a lot of these, even the most famous books are only like 20,000 reviews, you know, the, at the top that I've seen is like 40,000, 40,000 reviews of the ones that I've read at least. Um, so, yeah, they're not hugely popular, I think, in the I think there's like a small Star Wars book community within the larger sci fi fantasy community. And the people that aren't in that yeah. small community, like you either read them and like them or you don't think highly of them and just aren't into them. That's just kind of what I've gathered. I could be completely wrong. There could be people like me that like these kind of books and the Stormlight Archive. But again, I know that I'm biased, so I don't know. I think some of them are really well written. Others aren't. But either way, let's just jump into a couple. Uh, and you've never read a Star Wars book, right? I have not, dude. It reminds me of, like, they always have their own section. Uh-huh. So it's similar to me, like, the... um Warhammer stuff, mm-hmm. and then also, um, dude, there's the other, dude, there's, like, two series that, like, I mean, there's so many episodes or whatever of them. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, dude. You know what I'm talking about? It's like they have their own sections at the bookstores yeah. where it's literally, like... Yeah, I mean, Lord of the I Rings mean, is like, like hundreds, that. There's, like, always, of like, a Wheel of Time game. There's, like, a big fantasy section that may be multiple series, but it's always the same things in them. There's, like, a big it's Star almost like War. D&D. And then there's, like, yeah, there's, like, the Stormlights, the Game of Thrones, the Wheel of Times, all always next to each other. But then there's, like, other subsections, too, yeah, even within that, and that's how I, like, view Star Wars as, like, almost a and d like... yeah. Not that you can pick and choose and start anywhere, but it it, it does seem low key like overwhelming when you yeah, look at some so of those much. sections because there's, there's there'll so be so many much. books. It's like all right, well, I, I wouldn't even know like where to start. Yeah, you know? for sure. Um, well, maybe you can find a place to start if you ever have, end up having interest in these. So um, the first one off the list, uh, and this is one of my favorite Star Wars books, and it's it's my favorite Star Wars movie. It is the novelization of Revenge of the Sith. So on Goodreads, it's got a little under 20,000 reviews with a 4.26 out of 5. Uh, this one's great, especially if you like the movie. Like, I'd recommend going back and reading like The Phantom Menace and Attack of the Clones, but this one is like by far the best book from the prequel trilogy as far as those novelizations are considered. Um, and it is important to keep in mind that they are novelizations of a movie, so it's like the opposite of a you know film that's adapted after a book. These novels are written like, I believe they were written, because um, yeah, it came out in 2005, a month before the movie came out, so they were written in conjunction huh. with the movie. Okay. Um, but there's a lot of things in the book that like isn't fully explained and doesn't really happen in the movie because obviously, as we know, books can give you like inner dialogue and way more information. So it's just so good, yeah. man. If you like the movie, there is absolutely no reason not to just read. The, even if you're not interested in reading the, the Phantom Menace or the Attack of the Clones, 
Reading this book will not be a disappointment. It's so good. And if you've seen the movies, you're not going to be confused as to what's going on. There may be some elements that you're unfamiliar with, but if you like Revenge of the Sith, the movie, and you like to read, there's absolutely no reason not to read this book. I would just start here if I were you and you want to read a Star Wars book. Um, it's great. It's just there's not much else to be said. If you know what happens in the movie, you know what happens in the book, but it's just kind of a better version of it, um, in my opinion. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, Revenge of the Sith. Matthew Woodring Stover wrote it. Matthew Stover. I don't know why his middle name's up in here like that, but Matthew Stover. Um, so, yeah, next one I have on the list is actually I've got these three pulled up. So this is one of the more popular series. Um, it's the Darth Bane trilogy. Um, so in Star Wars, like when you get to the movies, there's always a Sith and an apprentice. You know, they talk about that in The Phantom Menace. There's always... You know, in the main six movies, there's Darth Sidious and then either Maul or Dooku and then Anakin and Vader as his apprentice. So there's always two. There's like thousands of Jedi, but only two yeah. Sith. So it wasn't always like that. Like, you know, according to the lore, like thousands of years before the movies, there were like tons of Sith, like similar to the Jedi Order. So there's just a bunch of Sith, but they end up like always being like in disarray and like killing each other and never able to accomplish their goals because they're all so evil and want to, you know, take power from each other. So this guy, Darth Bane, ends up being the one who uh, like enacts the rule of two and makes this new like concept for the Sith that there will always only be two, a master and an apprentice. And eventually the apprentice is supposed to rise up and kill their master take over as the Dark Lord of the Sith and then train somebody else. That's where this is born out of this character, Darth Bane. And this series is really good. Um, the first one uh, has... How does that work, though, with, like, Dooku? So... So is Dooku supposed to be the ma the master? No, no. So Dooku was technically an apprentice of Sidious after Darth Maul was killed or supposedly killed. He ends up coming back to life for a time. Um, or he technically never died, according to canon. But... So yeah, he was just like a filler. Um, I think the idea, if I understand correctly, is that uh, Sidious wasn't quite prepared to lose Maul, but he had Dooku like in the back pocket if he needed another apprentice. So he just kind of used him as like the guy to orchestrate the Clone Wars. But his plan all along was to get to Anakin. But see, I didn't even know that. I didn't even realize. Like, I guess I should have known that that it's there's only two of them. Like, I mean, it makes sense how yeah. you said that, but yeah, is that like a main theme in the movies that I just missed? Yeah, they talk, well, I mean, it's not like brought up a ton, but Mace does, Mace Windu mentions it in The Phantom Menace, like he's talking to Yoda, I think, and they're basically discussing whether or not Darth Maul was the apprentice or the Sith, because they're trying to figure out, like, if they got the main guy or if they only got his, you know, his apprentice. Um, cause, so what if you're a bad guy in... Like, or you want to be bad, but there's just already an apprentice. There's actually an example of that in the Clone Wars, and this is a spoiler for that show, so if you don't want to hear it, I guess plug your ears. But Darth Maul kind of comes back for a time and has his own apprentice that's another, like, being like him. And Darth Sidious, once they end up making enough noise in the galaxy, basically, and, like, trying to, like, make power moves, Darth Sidious shows up and kills the apprentice and then, like, imprisons Maul because he has some use for Wait, him. Wait, so Darth Maul's not supposed to have died? Well... What do you mean? So, well, he, I mean, that that was changed when the Clone Wars show came out. He did die when that movie came out, but then they retconned it and made it to where he ended up, like, losing his mind on, like, a trash planet and ended up having, like, these metal spider legs and, like, had this obsession with attacking Obi-Wan. It's actually a really, really great arc that they end up having him on, um, especially when you get to the, like, final season wow. of the show. But it is a little cheap, you know. He didn't actually die, and apparently... The more Star Wars that comes out, the more obvious it becomes that Qui-Gon Jinn was the only wussy that could be killed by a lightsaber because everybody else just gets cut in half and stabbed and ends up being fine the week, you know, the next day. But that's neither here nor there. Um, oh, Liam. All right, yeah, so Darth Bane. Yeah, Darth Bane. So there's uh, the Path of Destruction, the first one, 30,000 ratings, 4.3. The second one, uh, Rule of Two, which I just mentioned, has a 4.22 rating with about 22,000 and then another 20,000 ratings on the third one, Dynasty of Evil, with 4.3. So, I mean, you know, it gets a good amount of ratings. You know, not nothing obviously near like the fantasy and stuff that we've read, especially recently, like the Stormlight Archive or Mistborn. They've got hundreds, uh, hundreds of thousands of reviews. These are barely breaking 20 in some cases. So they're de obviously way less popular, but they're still getting good ratings by the people that read them. Um, and I think these books are among probably some of the better ones of all the Star Wars books. 
So it follows the more of the the dark side. Oh yeah, it's completely yeah, it's completely like he's, like the, he's main the main character. character. Um, you don't oh, okay. you don't get I like if that. I remember correctly, you don't get any POVs from anyone except him and his apprentice, if I remember correctly. So okay, it's actually a good read, man. It's uh, it, it, they were well written. Drew uh, Caprishan, who wrote these, has written several books uh, that are Star Wars um, other than these, and he, he's really good. He's got it locked. So. Those are good books. That's the Darth Bane trilogy. Um, okay, so next we have the Thrawn trilogy that I just recently mentioned. So these ones up here are a little older that came out in the 90s. I've not read these. These are the original Heir to the Empire trilogy. Um, I've read this newer, newer trilogy that started coming out in 2017, the first one just being called Thrawn. Um, and it's got 46,000 ratings with a 4.3 overall. So I think this is probably one of the higher more popular rated series of all the Star Wars stuff. These are so freaking good. Um, these Thrawn books, wow, the original ones have even more. This first one of the original has 90,000 ratings. But yeah. either way, um, so Thrawn, Thrawn Alliances, and Thrawn Treason are the three books in this trilogy. Fairly recent, the last one came out in 2019. These are really good. Um, a lot of people don't know Thrawn, but he's basically a character that was around during both the clone wars and the empire era. Um, and ends up his main kind of role in the star Wars lore is him being a, uh, admiral in the, in the empire, like underneath Palpatine. Uh, but it's kind of before the movies that he's really around. That's why he's not around in the original trilogy. Um, but these are great. Thrawn is such a good, he's a bad guy obviously also, but he's a super complex, like kind of like a Thanos type character where, you know he's evil and you don't agree with what he's doing necessarily, but a lot of the time you're like, wow, he's like really smart though and like has all of his like motivations and like reasons for doing things like pretty well spelled out. So even if at the end of the yeah. day he's a bad guy, you just understand him really well. And he's like super smart, um, really cunning. Like he's not a fighter. This isn't a guy that has a lightsaber. He is just an admiral that like, yeah. you know, manipulates and delegates and does all that kind of stuff. Um, super kind of smart character. So he's really popular as I'm far as the books. Yeah, I think you would probably like these two. Actually, of all the ones I've mentioned so far, besides Revenge of the Sith, I guess that's only two other things. But on this whole list, this would probably be the one I think you would like the most, even though it doesn't really have a lot of the lightsaber stuff that I know you would like. There's another one on here I think you'd like a lot, but this one, just as a reader, I think would probably be the one you would enjoy the most. Is this the newest yeah, this is or the just, newer trilogy the that newest. I'm looking at. The these ones right here by Timothy Zahn. Um, he did write the original gotcha. trilogy too, so it can be a little confusing. But it's the more recent ones, starting in 2017. So, yeah, that's the Thrawn tr trilogy. Um, highly recommend those if if you like the sound of like, you know, maybe you're not into the all the force stuff and like lightsabers and being super heavy on that. If you want a more like clever, um arguably better written star wars story i think these are probably for you yeah um really good author really good series that's thrawn okay this one's so good too uh next we have darth plagueis now this one is considered legends now so anytime you see legends this is the same with the darth bane series we looked at anytime you see that it's a legends book that means that it's essentially not canon anymore so technically this isn't what happened although this character was mentioned so in Revenge of the Sith, you probably you may remember the famous line of of Palpatine when him and Anakin are in that like ball thing. They're like watching like some show, and he's like, "Did you ever hear the tragedy of Darth Plagueis the Wise?" He gives him that whole spiel about how this guy in the past did know how to like save people from death, and that's kind of what starts Anakin's downfall and thinking that he can, you know, save mm -hmm. Padme from his nightmares he's having. So that's Darth Plagueis that Palpatine is referring to, and he was Palpatine's master. So again, back to the whole Rule of Two thing. Before Darth Sidious became the guy and ended up getting Anakin and Darth Vader, Darth Plagueis was his master. So this is such a good read, dude. This is might be my favorite of all the books, honestly. Like besides Revenge of the Sith, because it's not really a, a novel, you know, technically uh, in its own right. It's a novelization. As far as the like... Actual novels, Plague is, is probably my favorite. It's got 26,000 ratings with a 4.15 overall. And Plague is just a sick character. The whole story is cool. Like, one thing about a lot of Star Wars is, and I think this comes from 
George Lucas's movies <clears throat> being so heavily this way, but there's always a lot of politics and like government type stuff going on in yeah. all the books. Um, and they're cool in this one when you you kind of see the beginnings. This is like before the Phantom Menace, before that first movie with Darth Maul. Actually, the very beginning of that movie happens at the end of this book. It's kind of intertwined, which is really sick. Um, so yeah, I mean, if you're a Star Wars person, that's intro again. A lot of these are kind of focused on the bad guys, the dark side, if you will. But um, yeah, it was Darth Sidious's master when Palpatine was young and on the come up. Um, is he the guy on the right? Yeah, he's the guy on the right. So this is a... Uh, is he like a monster looking kind of yeah, guy? Let me show you what he looks like. Darth, Darth Pla- Plagueis. Plagueis. Let's see if we can... Play guy. Let's, why is this not working, dude? You know what? You can just throw a picture of him in the edit if you want, because I don't know what's wrong with my computer okay. right now. Um. Anyway, that's Darth Plagueis. He's a uh, he's a creepy looking dude. He's a good looking bad guy. Like he definitely looks intimidating and scary. Um. So yeah, Darth Plagueis. Are most of the books from a a bad guy's POV? No, I just a lot of the ones that are really really good are. Um. Yeah. See, I mean, I like that type of stuff. That's what Joe Abercrombie does. He has a lot of POVs from. Kind of theoretically the bad guy side. I feel like a lot yeah. of people don't do that enough. Yeah, like, I would agree. You know what I mean? Like have a POV from yeah and, the bad side. And especially in a lot of these stories, like a lot of, you know, kind of the whole, and this is just totally nerding out on Star Wars, but like a lot of the whole problem with like why the Jedi ended up failing and why it was so easy for Palpatine to trick him is because they become so like blinded and like kind of self-righteous and, you know, all that kind of stuff. So in, in that sense, it's different for like the old Republic and stuff, but in these eras that are centered around the movies and that Jedi order, it's kind of just not super fun. A lot of the time to get the perspective of the good guys, because they're kind of all in this, you know, dogmatic viewpoint as Palpatine puts it of just like, they're just kind of stuck in a rut in their ways and are kind of blinded to what's going on around them, which is why they end up, you know, failing and being absolutely, smoked by Palpatine and his clones. Um, so it's just more interesting to see the perspective of the bad guys a lot of time. Um, but there are some good ones. There yeah. are some good ones for sure from the POV of like Jedi or just regular good people in the world. So, but yeah, Darth Plague is probably my favorite, really good character. Um, and obviously it's got a lot of Palpatine too and a lot of his backstory. How do you get Darth? So yeah, that's just a uh, kind of something. I think it was actually Bane that came up with that. it. Um, the guy I told you about over here that did the rule of two, but yeah, yeah, it's essentially just, you don't get, you don't get that title until you become an actual Sith, like either an actual Sith apprentice under the Sith Lord or the Sith Lord himself. That's when you technically are like allowed to have like a Darth something name. And it's just a Sith name. Pretty sick. Did Lucas come up with that? Yeah. Yeah, he did. And with Vader, Darth, Vader means something. I don't know if Darth does, but Vader means something. I forget what it is. Um, but yeah, pretty sick, man. I'd love to have a Darth in front Darth of my name stick. one day. Darth, just a just a Darth Jesse out here. Darth doesn't Jesse. sound doesn't sound very intimidating. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, that's that one. Uh, next, we have the Old Republic that I referred to a couple times. Um, so yeah, these ones are really popular as well. Actually, not near as popular as I thought based on these ratings. Um, I guess they're not super old. They came out in the oh, these are different editions because it's saying they all or maybe not. I don't know. It looks like they came out in like the 2010 era. Um, and there, there's four books. It's a quartet of the old Republic. Again, this is like thousands of years before the movies when things were, um, you know, a lot different. Uh, the first one is Revan. Revan is a really popular character who starts out as a Jedi, ends up being a Sith, and then ends up being a Jedi again. It's a crazy story. It's really cool. I mean, wow. Yeah. <clears throat> He's like a fan How favorite did- for a lot of Star Wars fans. How do I mean? How do they have different people writing the book? Like, if I get it when it's like a trilogy and it's the same guy, yeah. <laughs> but this is like a series within the the world, and it's yeah, you know, it's weird. <clears throat> it has to be tough. It's another one of the things that makes Star Wars tough is there's so many different authors with different like viewpoints and like you know, you know, stories that they want to tell. Yeah, so writing styles, I'm sure too. Oh, definitely that as well. Um, there's kind of a thread of a story in these four books, but that's actually probably my biggest disappointment is they're not really super connected, but they're supposed to be like in a mm-hmm. series. But they're very, there's like mentions of different either characters of, or events in some of them, but then 
these last two especially do not. You really don't hear anything about the first two. You kind of hear some of the of the first one and the second one, but after that, there's really not much. Um, and the first two are the best. Yeah. Um, Revan's super, super good, but I really like Deceived, too. Deceived is another one that's mainly about a bad guy called Darth Malgus. He's probably my favorite Sith character in all of Star Wars. He's so dope. He's just like a brute. Um, but he's also like, he's a character that like starts out just bad. And he's a Sith like general. He's like the most vicious dude in the Sith army. This is before the rule of two. Um, and he's just got a lot of bloodlust, like anger and that type of stuff. But then he ends up also becoming an enemy of the Sith. So he's like this lone wolf. He's like, he's like Robert Kennedy Jr. and the independent party. That's just <laughs> against the Jedi and the Sith, but he's mostly bad. So like, you know where he stands, but so it's, he's a pretty cool character. Fatal Alliance and Annihilation are good, but they're not they're not as good. Um, I'm actually surprised that I have everything yeah. a four star rating because I would say that Revan and Deceived Dude, are better. I noticed you've not the only book you've given over four stars was Thrawn. Really, the first one. I can't believe yeah, I didn't five, even get it. Give it to Plagueis. It's. I will say it's been a while since I've read these books, so some of my opinions yeah. might be slightly skewed. But I feel like I remember Plagueis the best, and then maybe. Probably Revan and then Thrawn, um, obviously, other than Revenge of the Sith, um, which I can't believe I didn't give that a four. This four. Again, this was very early when I just started using Goodreads and it just started reading heavy, so my ratings would probably be different now um, because now, like I've talked about before, I kind of just base my rating off what it is, but it's neither here nor yeah. there. They're still, you know, they were still at least all getting fours and above for the most part, at least these ones I'm mentioning. There's certainly ones I've read that I didn't like as much. Um, so yeah, that's the Old Republic. Again, that's four books. I think the first one's the best, second one's a close second, and they're really kind of best in the order that they are uh, delivered in, one through four. So that's the Old Republic. They're really popular. Um, there's a lot of like the Knights of the Old Republic, like online PC game. These are like all kind of based on that lore, and a lot of people love those games, like as far as Star Wars fans are concerned. Um, there's like yeah. a whole story with a lot of these characters involved, so... Anyway, last one I have on here for my favorite Star Wars books is Master and Apprentice by Claudia Gray. Uh, 17, almost 18,000 ratings with a 4.18. Um, I actually gave this one a 5, okay. Um, so this one is pre-Phantom Menace, but it is about Qui-Gon Jinn, Liam Neeson's character, and his young Padawan, Obi-Wan Kenobi. Um, it's just really good. It's basically just them out on a mission, with, and some pretty crazy stuff happens. Um and it's just a really really well written book. Like obviously these are two characters whose future you already know pretty much everything about. So like it's kinda hard. Yeah. Like some of those stakes are just already gone. You know, they're not gonna die. Like, you know, nothing too crazy can happen. Nothing too crazy can be revealed because they can't learn too much. You know, that kind of stuff. So but it's still just really yeah. well Claudia Gray's really good. Um she's written a lot of Star Wars books. I haven't read many of them, but I thought she wrote this really, really well. Um and so, yeah, just a story about Qui-Gon and Obi-Wan um, that I really enjoyed. Um, the boys. Some honorable mentions that I didn't pull up would be like The Dark Disciple, which follows Asajj Ventress and, um, oh, what's his name? I forget his name, this other Jedi. Um, Dude, the one I always see, bro, is that like Asian-inspired one. It's like Ronin. Or Ronin, yeah, I have that. Um, so that's a book based on a character from... Star Wars Visions, which was that series that Star Wars did. And they're coming out with a second season, but it's basically an anthology where each episode was created by a different anime studio, a different J Japanese anime studio. And it's actually really good, dude. You like anime, you should 100% watch Visions because you'd probably really enjoy most of it. And one of those episodes... What is that on? It's on Disney+. Plus. Um, oh my God, I mean, I have, I have a login, bro. You can the have one. The one platform, yeah. Um, I literally have it because of Star Wars. Um <laughs> But yeah, it's a really good show. Um, some of the episodes are kind of like childish. But it's anime style? Yeah, it's made by actual Japanese anime studios that have made like other animes. Uh, yeah, I'm um, in for that, for sure. Yeah, dude, some of them are like really sick, and they like really expound on a lot of the like <clears throat> different things that can happen in the normal Star Wars world. Like they seem to have had liberty to kind of do like what they wanted with like the Force and lightsabers and that kind of thing, so... Yeah, it's really I interesting. Said for a second there, but yeah, you're good. I saw you phase out there for a second, but yeah. So that's the same. That's my favorite Star Wars books. I went a little longer than I thought I would, but 
Um, if you're a Star Wars fan and you like reading, like these are some of the ones I would recommend. There's a lot more out there that uh, I haven't read. There's a handful more that I have read, um, but these are probably my favorites. The Kenobi book's really good by John Jackson Miller. Um, the Count Dooku one's cool, but it's kind of written like a script, so it's a little weird. The From a Certain Point of View books are cool. That's where they go into each of the original trilogies, and I, I guess they'll probably do it for the prequels eventually, but they basically let all these different authors go in and write these little mini stories that are just the size of like a chapter. Some of them are really short, some of them are a little longer, but they fill in like different details. Um, like in those movies that just kind of make it cooler. Like none of it's really like super necessary, but it just kind of adds little elements to it. For example, do you remember in a new hope when <clears throat> R2D2 first shows up to see Luke? Um, and Luke's like, Oh, he's got a bad converter cell or something like that. And R2 had just gotten off that big Jawa machine and Luke bought him. You remember okay, that scene? Yeah. So there's another droid. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry that that's the one that has the bad converter thing or whatever. Um, it ends up like busting, like exploding kind of. And then because that happens, Luke then selects R2 instead, which R2 needs to get to Luke. So yeah. one of the chapters in From a Certain Point of View for A New Hope is like how R2 and that other droid before they got out there to be sold were kind of communicating. And R2 like explained to him that he had something really important he had to do, like a really important message. He couldn't deliver the details, but he was like, you know, this is really important. Like the fate of the galaxy could depend on it. And so when that droid gets selected, he like does it to himself so that he won't get bought by Luke. So it's like a silly thing that's not necessary. And for a lot of people yeah. it would probably be kind of annoying for it to be added, but some of them are better than others and it's kind of cool. Um, so yeah, that's Star Wars, man. Did I convince you to read any of them? Yeah, I mean, I've, we've already talked about it before. Like, I think Star Wars... I wish that... It, it's just the one instance where the movie... Because the movies kind of came out first, I'm assuming. Like, it's just the one instance where there's not... Like, it's it's just a shame that there's not, like, a 10-book series that it's like based off of. So your mic's off by the way. Um, sorry, um, but it's because dude, it's just such a, we've talked about, it. I mean, it's just such a good idea. Like lightsabers yeah. are, I mean, it's just so many really, really good ideas. And so, I mean, yeah, it's, you know, it just sucks that there's not hard cannon, which I guess there is. Yeah, there is. But, but like, a lot of it's just mean? been convoluted and some stuff's been taken out and some stuff's been retconned. That's kind of the whole problem with Star Wars. It's like a you can't put a toothpaste back in the bottle thing. There's so much content out there now that it's hard to like recover. Yeah. And I don't know if they can ever really fix that problem. Like in my opinion, they should stop for like five to ten years releasing anything and then come back with like some seriously good stuff that they've been prepping for. Because right now it's just, I mean, Disney Star Wars is so bad. It's so bad, dude. Like the new movies were bad. They were bad, dude. They they ruined a lot of like important lore. They ruined the whole story of Anakin Skywalker and Luke Skywalker and Vader. And then they just were really bad and like made no sense in a lot of ways. But now the shows come out, dude, and they're like even worse, bro. It's crazy, dude. They're taking characters like Obi Wan Kenobi, dude. If you, did you watch the show? I think I said this in another no, dude, video. I haven't dude. even seen the newest. I haven't even seen the newest Star Wars. Like, like the I movies? saw the second one. Yeah, I saw the first one, bro, and it was horrible. And even those like, were wasted potential. Of the like, main characters. Kylo and Rey were both sick characters. Like it's just all this stuff. But then Obi Wan, do they take one of, if not the most beloved Star Wars character, at least one of the most beloved of a generation, us? Yeah. They take him and put him in a show where there's a scene, dude, where he is trying. He's in like the desert, all right, and they're on this desert sand road, okay, and they come up to a like a checkpoint that has like guards and like this laser gate that the car can't get through unless you turn it off. They like do whatever, dismantle the guards and whatnot. Dude, they're like essentially in an open field and the gate is just for the road. And Obi-Wan on his feet, bro, a human body, goes up trying to press the button to get it in open and it won't. And you can literally see in the shot that he can just walk around it. You can see in the shot that he does not need the gate to be open to get across. He just needs to walk around it. And it's just stuff like that where it's like, why do you have an IP like Star Wars and you're not handling it better? I mean, there were a lot of problems with that show. There were some cool moments, too. There's cool moments moments like in all the shows that they put out. But as a whole, dude, they just they just cannot stand up on their, on the legs that they were given, dude. They're so poorly written. It, it, Andor George was Luke really good. Is not involved but, anymore? 
No, um, I mean he sold his, you know, he sold Lucasfilm to Disney. That's so how Disney got it. He kind of has like a consulting role, but at this point, he doesn't even care anymore, from what I understand, because it's been so ruined. But at the same time, dude, George Lucas, for all that he did, like. He wasn't perfect either, dude. Like a lot of the reason the prequels got hate was because of George's like George's like forced involvement in forcing the actors to act a certain way and say things a certain way and like kind of taking away their agency and then just other stuff, dude. Like Attack of the Clones specifically. When I rewatched it with Taylor, I didn't say any of it to her because I wanted her to have a good first experience. But I'm sitting there in my head going, "That doesn't make sense. Why would they do that? That doesn't add up." Like so many moments in the movie where it's just kind of devoid of logic as. A, a famous YouTuber whose name I yeah. can't remember says all the time, but but like you, do, I'm saying all that to say, like you just said, dude, the fact that such a good concept of Star Wars and lightsabers and the Force, Jedi and Sith, just can't reach its full potential, man, is just a tragedy, dude. It's a tragedy. It really is. Like it's too. so, and they have they have the source material to do it, bro. If they just went back and made Old Republic material, they have all they need. They have all the stories, all the characters. They could make something sick, but instead they just do what they do. So it's a it's a tragedy. Um, but some of the maybe, books are good. Maybe twenty years from now, dude, we'll have just some. Maybe so. Maybe right around the time that we get Republic Stormlight trilogy. Book Six, Star Wars. Star Wars will be good again, dude. I can't say Star Wars sometimes, man. I sound like I have a Star speech Wars. impediment. I'll say like Star Wars. Like I just can't say it right. Star Wars. So it yeah, is man. hard though. I do think I will probably read one soon because they look like they're kind of quick reads too. Oh, dude, you'd read it. I literally most of those books I just mentioned I read in a day. I mean, they're like yeah. four hundred pages, and the books are like really tiny. So yeah, you'd, you'd knock it out. I'm so, down, yeah, bro. I might have to go it. to like I said. There was so many of them in the used bookstore, so I might grab a couple. We need to read one that you haven't read too, though. Like I'll I'm definitely down. read some of the ones you have, but. Yeah, maybe we should read we should Ronin, man. Read we should read Ronin, the one that's got the, the Asian oriental look yeah, to yeah. it. Um, we would probably both enjoy that. So, yeah, that's it okay. for um, that. We just I just thought we'd talk about some Star Wars books. I grew up on it. If you like Star Wars books, any of these or any ones I didn't mention, throw a comment out there um, and be on the lookout for what we have coming in the future. We'll have more Mistborn coming out soon. We've got more Napoleon coming out soon. We've got more Rise and Fall of the Third Reich. We've got a cool announcement for a fantasy series we're going to do um, in the coming months-ish, um, or probably yeah, about, probably kind of, about a month. Kind of... um, we'll have some other guests on in, in the future. Actually, we've got several videos planned with guests. So stick around, like, and comment, and uh, we'll see you on the next one. It's Slip Book Reviews. Peace. Out. Peace.